Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. How's everybody getting along? So, the tropics, yeah. We have two areas out in the uh, Atlantic here. Now, uh, we have this area in the Caribbean, about a 20% chance through day five. And out here in the MDR, the Atlantic, about a 20% chance. So, does this mean... Um, at this point that we'll see something develop out of the Caribbean. This is the storm I'm most concerned about going over the next five to ten days here. And as we go in motion here, you can see this could become a player here in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's take a look, see if the Euro agrees as well. All right, so taking a look here, let's go throughout time here. We're going to go through Thursday, Friday. Here is those two areas. So what we're looking at here essentially is weak systems to begin with here. So we got these areas south of the Caribbean Islands, and then we got this area out here by the Cape Verde Islands. So we'll continue to watch these two systems. I'm less concerned about this system out here towards the Cape Verdes because, as I'll show you in time, the models tend to want to recurve this system out into the Atlantic. So it will be less of a threat, although Bermuda, you will have to watch out for this. So let's put this into motion See what the modeling is showing here. So this is by Monday, next Monday, August 29th. So as you can see, we don't see too much in the way of activity out here. There is a big wave coming off the Cape Verde Islands here. But look at the tremendous amount of shower and thunderstorm activity here just east of Jamaica. Right over Port-au-Prince here, Haiti, lots of copious amounts of rainfall. This could be a big rainfall maker as we head throughout time. And let's continue here. Take a look at this. This is through Wednesday, August 31st, and take a look at this. We take it into the eastern Gulf. Now, granted, this is pretty far out. This is Friday, August, or September 2nd by this point, but take a look at all of the rainfall that will be moving up. And This does start to look like a minimal hurricane at this point. So, you know, GFS is kind of indicating, has been indicating that we could have an eastern Gulf of Mexico system here. So we'll have to continue to watch for this. But you see out here in the Atlantic, here is that system, that second system. It does be, start to become a hurricane by this point. Another tropical wave out here. Two more tropical waves we'll have to watch. But watch this as we go in motion. This hurricane, these hurricanes tend to get stronger and then they recurve out in the Atlantic. Now, granted, this is September 3rd. Take a look at this. So we start to have what I was talking about in the previous video segment. We have this area of high pressure starting to build west here. And will this system move to the west? Well, let's take a look here. As we go throughout time, we got Saturday, Sunday. Look at this. Do not focus on this one point, but yes, we are showing a hurricane. It looks to be potentially a major hurricane over Louisiana. This is too far out to say if this trend will hold. There, There is pretty certainty at this point that we will have a system coming out of the Caribbean. What it does in the Gulf is remaining to be seen, but there is indication that this high-pressure system will continue to build west and that could eventually move that system further west. And you can see out here into the rest of the Atlantic, take a look at this hurricane. It's actually showing recurving well before Bermuda now. So that's good news for Bermuda. And we show that landfall there in Louisiana. And then look at that. Becoming a big rainfall maker is too early to say if this will become a flooding event inland. But, you know, if this were to hold true, that would be a tremendous amount of rain here for the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, and the Ohio valleys all right so taking a look at the euro here let's take a look because we want to get some confirmation from the euro here that things are going to go as planned you know the gfs can really throw some things out there that can be kind of erroneous at times so let's take a look so yeah the euro is kind of hinting you know there's something out here in that secondary region maybe something here as well there's that high pressure we're gonna see if that builds west uh like the gfs indicated because that's gonna show us of any potential sort of thing coming out of it um, as we approach the Gulf of Mexico. So this is Sunday, August 28th. So there it is. We're starting to really ramp up shower and thunderstorm activity here in the Caribbean. And as we go throughout time here, take a look at this. Yeah, we start to get somewhat of a low there in the north central part of the Caribbean. It's kind of convoluted with a bunch of moisture here but there is definitely weakness one thing to note on the euro here is uh a, another secondary system that was kind of showing up on the gfs as well so that's showing up on the euro as well so is that system that secondary system i was showing behind it as well so the euro is kind of confirming uh what we initially thought here 
uh, with the GFS. However, as we go towards Saturday, September 3rd here, it's interesting to note uh, this system here becomes more of a player than it did on the GFS. This system stays weaker since it's in close proximity uh, to the uh, close to the Caribbean islands here. Big system coming off the coast of Africa here. And as you can see, we have a lack of high pressure here. So what does that ultimately mean? Well, it means that this system could uh, uh, eventually just get hung up, become a strung out low kind of enter the Gulf of Mexico slower, so to speak, instead of bending westward quicker. Um, at this point, if you're in the Gulf of Mexico or the Caribbean, definitely keep an eye on this. Um, I'm waiting for more confirmation here from the euro, but one thing's for sure. Look at this out here. The euro is definitely indicating, kind of confirming with the GFS that we are going to see an uptick. But the pattern is a bit different. Take a look at this low pressure system. This is a trough along the U.S. East Coast. Could this pick, if these systems out here become stronger, they could get picked up in this trough. And this high pressure is way up here, so we don't have any high pressure helping steer this Caribbean low up to the west like the GFS was indicating. All right, so taking a look at the Pacific here, let's see what we got going on here. Well, Eastern Pacific is dead as a doornail. Look at that. Yeah, that's going to uh, lead to the uptick in activity in the Atlantic, as I said before. We do have some systems out here in the western uh, Pacific here. Take a look at this. This is Tropical Storm Ma'an, uh, 65 mile per hour. It's not expected to become a typhoon. It is coming in towards just south of Yangjing here. So we should continue to watch this system move to the west and become mainly here a big rainfall maker in southern China. Uh, other in the news out here, you know, the northern Philippines had to deal with a lot of rain. We do have another system heading out here towards the, you know, Japan. And as we take this, let's go further out and see if there's any chance of development across the entire Pacific. Well, as you can see, let's just back that up. Ma'an moves inland there. You can see becoming a big rainfall maker across southern China. That heads inland. We're also watching, and I forgot to mention this to you, Take a look at this. This is Typhoon Tokage here, just east of, at this point, Japan. 85 mile per hour sustained wind. It is accelerating to the northeast here, and that will pretty much be out of the picture as well. So as we go in time, is there anything that really catches the eye out here in the Pacific? Well, there is a potential typhoon out here towards Wednesday, August 31st. That approaches here from the south. There's Japan. So this could depending on how close this comes here, come close to Japan. And here in the Eastern Pacific, we will start to have some of these systems line up here. You can see there's potential, but look at the Mexican coast is pretty well clear here. And as we continue in time, take a look at this. This typhoon pretty much kind of stalls just south of Japan, and then it starts to wobble here towards Taipei, Taiwan. So this is something we'll have to watch. You know, it is Saturday uh, September 3rd, so we, at this point, yeah, it's far out. A lot can happen. A lot can change. But at this point, we'll continue to watch it here because that pretty well pummels towards just south of Shanghai here. So we'll have to watch for that there, depending on where that system is. All right, so taking a look at the upper level pattern here, let's take a look through the rest of August and the beginning of the September. So what we're looking at here is that trough continuing here across the east. You got high pressure building here along the U.S. East Coast. And here out west, we have that ridge as well. So let's see if this continues in time here. This is Saturday the weekend. Look what starts happening. We start to get ridge. That's with that heat building across the east, and we get a big old trough in the west and central part of the U.S. So as we continue through the rest of August here into the beginning of September, we're going to start to see that ridge start to wane a little bit here along the east. We're going to start to see a little bit of troughiness kicking up with this trough. We'll see if this lifts out to the northeast here. Um, but as you can see in time here, Definitely the trend is more stormier here, especially on the Euro. But look what's going to replace it behind it. And it'll be interesting to see if this can make it to the East Coast and push. It's going to be hard to push this low out because look how much blocking there is up here in south Southern Greenland. But if we can get this ridge starting to develop across the East, it will steer those hurricanes more in a northerly fashion here. And it would 
affect the U.S. East Coast and the Gulf Coast tremendously. So I wanted to show you the difference here between the GFS and the Euro. Take a look at the upper pattern. So yeah, come late in the weekend, we start to see, there it is, that ridging across the Northeast. That's just like with the Euro. And as we head through the next week or so, through the rest of August, it's kind of lining up at this point with the Euro here. You can see, although the trough is a bit more progressive, it's able to lift out much quicker. So look what starts forming behind it September 1st here. This ridge really starts to take over. So this is the big difference I wanted to show you that was showing up in the tropics too on the Euro initially. Um, is The Euro is indicating that this area of high pressure is not going to build west the way the GFS is. And see, this is Friday, September 2nd. That storm that's coming out, showing up here um, by this point, would be forced further west if this high pressure on the GFS verifies and pushes west. If the euro is right, um, at this point there won't be any high here, and there'll be a trough along the U.S. East Coast. So at this point, the question is on the euro... Does it kind of meander towards the west, or does it eventually get picked up in the westerlies or this trough, this base of this trough? Or it could actually move east of Florida. There's a lot of solutions with this, and that's why I want you to stay tuned. All right, the HRRR model. What is going on here? Look at this across the Gulf Coast. This is just going to continue as we go throughout the week. Let's take a look. The northeast is clear as a bell up here, but look at this. As we head into Thursday here, 7 a.m., take a look at this. So we're pretty well smooth sailing up here in the northeast and the mid-Atlantic. But look at down here across the southeast. This is where we're dealing with all that tropical moisture. And we'll continue to watch showers and bands thunderstorms here continuing to develop from southeast Texas all the way up into Louisiana and the panhandle of Florida, southern Alabama, maybe all the way inland as well into Mississippi and Alabama and eventually Georgia. So as we continue in time here, let's see what the HRRR mesoscale analysis is showing. Basically, your future radar is showing a big old mess here across the southeast. Look at this. Across the Florida Peninsula, we're going to be seeing those big gully washers inland. And look at here across southeast Louisiana, just northeast of New Orleans here towards Gulfport. Showers and thunderstorms likely. We will see the potential, you know, later in the day here, early evening hours. Take a look. We got some lone cells here into western New York. So we will have to watch it with the next system here coming in from the Ohio Valley. And as we continue in time here, take a look at this. We start to see showers and thunderstorms. This is 5 a.m. Friday. So, yeah, across western New York, upstate New York. We're staying pretty dry here across most of the northeast corridor into New England as well. And then here across the southeast, we'll be dealing with continued rounds of showers and thunderstorms likely. So, you know, as we continue in time here through your Friday TGIF, look at this. Let's just back up and then we'll forward here. Look at this. We could have a thunderstorm complex form right around the capital district of upstate New York, Albany, up just south of Burlington, Vermont. We could be dealing with some potential for some isolated damaging wind, large hail threats here. And that progresses towards the east. And look at that. We start to get some stronger cells here down towards the New York City area, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, just south of Kingston, Newburgh area. We'll take a look at that. And then look at, we get a redevelopment back towards Lake Erie here, northwest Pennsylvania, towards 1 p.m. Friday. So we'll have to continue to watch for that and look at that. So yeah, Friday is a day we might have to watch in the northeast here for some isolated severe. This is not going to be widespread damaging wind large hail, but some of these cells here could contain a damaging wind gust, large hailstones, that sort of thing. So watch out for that. And here in the Northeast Corridor as well, we could have some stray stronger cells here in some of these embedded lines and as well. And then down and through the Southeast here, your TGIF is going to be dodging between raindrops here in New Orleans, up towards the Panhandle of Florida into Georgia as well. All right, rainfall totals here. Let's take a look at the total QPF, see what's going on here. It's definitely bullseye time across the southeast. Northeast, we're not going to see a whole lot. Most of it's going to be bottled up here into northern New England, northern New York. And look at this along the Gulf Coast. You know what? I want to go straight to the Gulf Coast first. So let's actually take a journey, a little jaunt on here to the southeastern part of the United States. This is where our bullseye is going to be through early next week. Look at this. 
yeah, this is this is pretty solid. This is oh, two to three inches here into the red and here into the yellows here across central and southern Mississippi into west central Alabama. This is where you could see three and a half, four, maybe five inches locally higher. Across the Florida Peninsula, you're seeing one to two inch solid total. So a lot of decent rainfall out of this. It's helped keep the temperatures cooled down as well. And as we head to the northeast, I wanted to briefly show you this. Look at this. This is through Saturday. So those storms on Friday are mainly, as I was showing you, going to drop a quarter to a half an inch in most of northern upstate New York, a tenth to a quarter inch across Pennsylvania, parts of New Jersey, and into New England. And as we head through next week, it's not till next Wednesday that we see the next chance of showers and thunderstorms pushing in. So we're going to see a draw, another dry spell move through. Uh, come the weekend into early next week. All right, if you were sending photos and videos, look at this beautiful rainbow by Derek Renschler. Just sent in nice rainbow. Lebanon County, Pennsylvania, August 22nd, 2022 here. Take a look at this beauty. This was on August 22nd at 7, 10 p.m. in the evening. Look at this. This is nice. So, yeah, uh, nice sight to behold. You don't see these too often, but you know, this time of year you can get sun shining behind those storm clouds as the storm's moving east and look what you get. Beautiful rainbow. Nice capture there, Derek. All right. And John here from, take a look at this, thunderstorms without rain in Islip, New York. Take a look at this. This was on Tuesday, uh, August 23rd here. So nice capture there. Thunderstorms without rainfall here in Islip, New York. Hopefully you can get some more decent rainfall as the drought is continuing to expand, although some areas got some drought relief. All right, so taking a look at high temperatures here, those are actually mins. Let's take a look at maxes here. Take a look at this. This is Thursday. Look at the 90 degree line is pushing way to the north here. That's for people who want some more temperate temps. That's not looking very good. We head into the weekend here for, or well, TGIF. That's close enough. Take a look. We see an initial shot of 70s up here, uh, but we still have, we're stuck with like 90 degrees up here in the parts of New York City, Atlantic City, these areas. Heat's building out here in the central part of the U.S. So let's kick it towards the weekend here. So yeah, things are, we're going to see an initial shot of cooler air, 70s above this line. But we're going to build, you can see we still have plenty of upper 80s here in parts of the mid-Atlantic, 90s as well, D.C., uh, Atlantic City up to almost 90 in New York City. But see these this area of heat? Let's take a look and see what happens with it. Is it, is it headed east? Well, it does look like it initially. See, Sunday we see a surge of mid to upper 80s here into the northeast. So most temperatures will not be in the 70s by this point. And take a look at this. We're at 91 in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, 90 in Albany. This is your Monday. It's more like the dog days of summer, and some of you will be going back to school. It won't feel like fall. It'll feel like summer. And take a look at this. As we head into Tuesday, that just reinforces. Look at this area of 90s in the northeast. So going into September, we could be looking pretty warm here. Extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Bingham to the Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Take a look at this. Thursday will start off sunny into the mid to upper 80s. Humidity and heat will be building into Friday with that next front. Chance of showers and thunderstorms definitely likely after, particularly between 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. We'll be seeing highs approach the upper 80s, and we could have tenth to a quarter of an inch with locally higher amounts over a half an inch in some of those bigger gully washers. There is a chance of damaging wind large hail, but it will be a very minuscule threat. So any storm could become severe, but it's going to be isolated severe. Into Saturday and Sunday, things clear out. We'll be approaching 90 by Monday. Take a look at that. Hot as a firecracker. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. There's links in the description down below for all the good stuff I am working on my winter weather 2022-2023 outlook. Get my Facebook page at Media Mark. That's my main page. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Twitter at Weather Eastern. As always, smash the like button, question or comment down below. Thanks for joining me.